Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner, I wish you to go slow. Measure the words. Make sure it's correct as it comes in. This is the next to the last channel of 2015. There actually are two more to come. I say next to the last because it's the next to the last one in a cryon meeting. And so we are going to say that this one is where we wish to bring you information for the future. Some will say this is a science channel. It isn't. But there are those who may say, well, I want scientists to hear what you had to say today, cry on. And so, right now, I may have those listening who have been told to listen. If this is you listening at this point in time, you're listening in the future. But of course, you don't think it's the future. For you, it's now. For me, it's now. For the crowd in front of me, it's not now. How do you like it so far? We speak to many out of the time frame that you think. This channel may be brought forward later. and This channel may be something that will be brought into a venue you don't expect to prove what you've just discovered. <laughs> to validate what you know is there now that you did not when the channel was given. Confused yet? It's that kind of a channel. My partner gives chills, for he knows that the information is beautiful. He knows it's appropriate, he knows it's desired, and that humanity wants what is coming now. So he goes slow. I want to talk about a discovery. A discovery that will be made, that is being made, and it happens gradually. And before I discuss what it is or how it works, I want to give you some things to think about. Question. Is it possible that there is a template existing in your DNA that carries the secret to youth? A template that isn't simply data. It is part of the molecular structure of multidimensional DNA that can be activated and exposed in certain cases. And when it is, it changes everything about the human being that it belongs to. Is it possible that there is something inside every single molecule of your DNA that could keep you alive two, three, four times as long as you're living now. Is there a template of birth? A design that can become chemistry? that right now is simply laying there as an instruction set that is outside of the purview of your DNA's three-dimensional thinking it's different what do you think about the prophets who live 900 years I jump right to it I want you to answer the question inside and if you're a scientist go ahead and answer it foolishness reported in many ways in many places from different sources that some of the characters you read about in the scriptures perhaps or in the history books perhaps lived far longer than any other human beings have ever lived 
a few, not one, lived over 600 years. Number one, is it possible? Number two, would there be reasoning from spirit or creative source for that to occur? Number one, is it possible? I am sitting here in the chair telling you it is not only possible, this shows that it was done. In certain cases with certain human beings and with males only, they lived grand lifetimes for the procreation of the race with their consciousness. Simple mechanics. The male seed is fertile to the end. The females are not. It was the man who had to live a very, very long time in order to pass the consciousness through many, many children into a fresh area of the planet that needed that consciousness. Do you believe it? Now you know why. What was the process to keep this man or men alive for that duration? It's simple. They had an activated template of youth. Now I'm using terminology that is not medical, that is not scientific, and you may have your own. There actually exists right now, I'll tell you it, stay tuned, there actually exists right now a name for this because it's suspected in biology. Number two, when a human being has spontaneous remission or what some have called spontaneous healing, what occurs? Number one, is it real? Do you believe it? Now you're a little more current, scientist. You've seen it. It's been reported. You believe it because of that. Number two, how did it work? <laughs> and number two has always been the mystery. And number two has with it a lot of energy. There are those who believe that the consciousness of the individual who was sick brought it about. That is why they call it spontaneous. This would mean that through consciousness alone and perhaps without knowing it, there was an activation of the template. So fast was it. So amazing was it that it was beyond that which was recognizable as possible in 3D or in medical history. It's almost like the body cleaned itself. That cellular rejuvenation was accelerated vastly for a few days, for a few weeks to clean out that which did not belong there to save the life of the individual. Spontaneous automatic remission of a disease healing of something that didn't belong there and it's real and in the number two category there are those who say aha it's the placebo effect as though the explanation giving a name was all that's necessary and you can walk away <laughs> oh it's just the placebo effect Let's go do something else. What is the placebo effect? That really should be number three. The placebo effect is human consciousness through expectation of results, getting the results for no reason except for the expectation. There you have consciousness ruling the chemistry of the body. Full and complete expectation activating the template. Let's talk about a little science. There is a field that is called quantum biology. 
It's real. It exists. There are those in it. And the premise is this. That biology, like other physics, has quantum areas. Therefore, the molecule itself of DNA or any other molecule must have quantum attributes as well as three-dimensional attributes. Now, for whatever reason, this is controversial. You expect quantumness in physics for years. It has belonged to physics, and yet somehow there is a wall, a barrier that gets put there when you talk about biology as though biology was not physics. But it is. In fact, biology primarily is physics. For chemistry depends upon the very things that quantumness depends on. The spin of the electrons around the atoms that there come together to create certain kinds of chemistry of life. It is more profound in a life science than one that is not. Question, is it real? Quantum biology, the study of quantumness in biology and life science is real. What have they discovered? They've discovered that some quantum energies actually change DNA in interesting ways. They don't know why. They don't know what. But when quantum energies of many kinds are applied to chemistry of many kinds, there are reactions. They don't know why. Doctors, let me talk to you. There is a suspicion that within certain molecules, there are things that should be able to be seen and they're not. You see the results of them in quantum experiments, but you cannot see them through an electron microscope. They should exist to create the result of the experiment, and they don't. They're invisible. Dear ones, they're not invisible. They're multidimensional, just as you suspected. So it carries us to this, therefore, the template that we are discussing inside the human body that exists in many molecules, including that which is DNA, is only visible if it is exposed by a multidimensional force. Let's say it again. In different words, my partner, here it comes again. The suspected energy in certain molecules will show itself when you expose that molecule to other quantum energies. Period. It is the only time when you get to see what is there. And when you start to see it, it will start having cluster patterns. Patterns that you may not recognize because you have not seen it yet in three-dimensional biology. But you've always suspected it. Let's call it what you think it is. The you thing cluster. The you thing template. It should be there. When certain experiments are done, it shows itself for a moment and then stops. Some have applied magnetics as the multidimensional force to expose the template. And so the experiment goes like this. You take the mixture, you put certain magnetic fields with it, you take a look at it, the best you can with electronic microscopes and you look for what you suspected was there and lo and behold you see a piece of it it's there 
How many years ago did we tell you about magnetics? How many years ago did we tell you that magnetics is a field that's going to be part of biology and when you come in contact with what is called designer magnetics and when you learn how to create magnetic fields that are designed and purposely placed that is when you're going to see things happen not with simply a magnet not good enough you're going to have to come up with something more but dear ones when you do it will be a multi-dimensional force which by the way magnetism qualifies a multi-dimensional force will reveal the euthing molecules attribute the template is in everything the template is in everything spontaneous remission is the template being activated in certain cases by the human beings consciousness either survival or fear or divine intervention and you've seen it over and over and over one of the things that's going to happen in biology is the increase in the acknowledgement of quantumness and the beginning study of creating a life force which is now different because it's exposed to quantum energies exposing the template for what it is to be able to be seen even in 3d partially when exposed correctly it will show itself then things start to move now now let's turn the page and scientists you can you can stop now because now we're going to talk about things that you will say are eye rolling to the max you'll say it couldn't be this way it just isn't this way when I reveal what innate really is the smart body that which you have called innate is in total control of the exposure of the youthing template when multi-dimensional forces are applied innate sees it and exposes what it should expose innate is the smart body intelligence that has no source that you can call a source it is not from your brain innate is not a brain function the brain is a computer that survives with you you do something it remembers it if it hurts you you don't do it again you have experiences that help you survive from moment to moment your rememberer that's in your brain the creative things that happen come from your pineal we have told you this before the things that go beyond both of those is part of the triad which we said involves the heart the heart is so important it actually is involved in some of the things that the scientists say the brain is doing it's the heart that's doing it there will say there were those who say well look if there's not you don't have brain functions in the heart oh yes you do there's synapse in the heart if you want to look for it there's magnetism in the heart if you want to look for it there's all manner of things in the heart it is not innate so what is innate how does it work and what's going to happen we've talked in the past about the future of humanity starting to come in differently that part of what is is going to be in the future is children born with a much more advanced innate in other words the ability to tie together that which you've experienced the last lifetime and this lifetime so that you don't make the same mistakes twice and that is innate I still haven't told you where it comes from have I oh I will 
child burns his finger on a stove, never touches a stone for the stove for the rest of his life. That's brain function, isn't it? Did the innate have anything to do with it? Oh yeah. You see, <laughs> the innate is the smart body agreeing with the brain. It's all integrated. Now listen to this. Here is what the innate, and I'll, I'll identify what it is soon. Here's what the innate is going to do with a newborn. The newborn will not touch a stove. Because the newborn remembers from the last lifetime what it's like. He carries it over and you're going to call it instinct. Don't touch the stove. The newborn is going to remember also the mistakes that were made that caused emotional distress and not do them again. The newborn is going to carry in the wisdom from the past life of mistakes. And part of the mistakes appeared emotionally and physically. It was the brain, it might have been the pineal and the heart together, but it's the innate that will tie it together and help the newborn remember it and pass it forward. Intact as instinct. Now I'm going to tell you what innate is. And it's confusing. Because you will then linearize it. You will not be able to understand how it passes from one life to another. Because you don't know how multidimensional things work, especially when it has to do with the soul. Innate is not the soul. See, you were wrong. There's a Hebrew word meaning to ride. And the Hebrew word to ride is Merkaba. And the Merkaba of a human being has really never been defined really accurately. What is it? What does it do? The Merkaba is huge. Eight meters wide. Every, every human being. Here's what it is. It is the multidimensional field which is created by trillions and trillions of DNA molecules. The DNA molecules are identical all through the body. Every single one of them unique to you and identical. That ought to tell you something because when they get together, if you want to say that, and they're always together, they create a field around the body. The field is a multidimensional field spiritually. It's always been seen and known as the Merkaba. Welcome to the innate. Your DNA collectively is what innate is. DNA cannot be taken apart as one thing or another. It is either collective or it is not. Let me tell you something. DNA decides when you die. Innate decides when you die. The field around you will give up the ghost. It's not the brain. Sure, if the heart stops, nothing continues, and there is death, but what about if the kidney fails? At what point is death then certain when it can't process this or that? Sometimes it makes no sense when death occurs. And those who have seen it over and over in hospitals know that there's something else going on in the body that I will call death intelligence. When that which is innate sees there's suffering ahead and there's no more hope, rather than go through the suffering, there's the shut off. That's innate. That's the smart body. Because it's really smart. It's also, listen, listen. It's also an innate that's coming back in the next lifetime because it's connected to the soul and the pineal and all it is. It is your Merkaba. Your Merkaba is the same as the last time. Just like your soul is the same of the last time. You carry around different patterned DNA that has the same Merkaba as the last life. Now go figure that out. You can't. 
because this is a mechanics that is multidimensional and spiritual it is so beautiful to know that the you the core of you who you are gets passed over and over if you could really meet you in a past life and many of you had you meet each other different face same Merkaba different face same soul same innate innate knows everything about every single lifetime you've had innate knows you better than you know you and when you start getting in touch with innate this is when things start to happen including the ability to activate the youth template are you listening it's going to happen humanity is going to start living longer for numbers of reasons when they start being able to activate it artificially with other fields that are quantum there will be a rejuvenation of that which was the temple of rejuvenation we told you it was coming back just different looking and the other one is you you with you how many times have we told you this that the consciousness of the human being when fine-tuned taking on the attributes of life and mastery will live a very long time so crying where do stem cells fit into all of this <laughs> that's where the templates are <laughs> that's where the templates are and the stem cells are in every single cell you have they're still there even that is controversial but that is being shown and learned there's a fast track to stem cell technology that is being investigated but even that is not necessary there come a time when you use your own stem cells instead of any from any other source because they're the ones with the template you really want innate there are things coming you don't expect when are they coming cry on the answer is yes when you allow them to come when there's enough light on the planet listen to me when there's enough light on the planet where these discoveries will not be weaponized and that's when you'll get them you hear me when will that be when you create it dear ones you're in a struggle right now with light and dark you know this when it's over and light is predominant on this planet and that is to say that integrity starts to win over non-integrity in business in government in all things you'll start to see shifts of what people will accept and what they want it's going to come from the people first and then trickle on to those things that is when you start seeing these kind of things happen they're in the works now some of it has actually been discovered now I'll tell you this because cryon does not reveal things that are not discovered they have to have been discovered and they are but typically typically they're at their infancy and it will take a long time before they are refined but the template is there and some are seeing it cry what will the template do and the answer is just exactly what you think it will do cell rejuvenation will be almost perfect the telomeres will not shorten the body will not age crying this is going to create social problem isn't it too many people right not enough food <laughs> can I say this one more time oh how 3d of you <laughs> you'll figure out what creates babies you'll be wiser for it you'll figure out how to create food for the planet in multi-dimensional ways do you know what happens when you expose seeds to multi-dimensional energies that are benevolent <laughs> it's not a GMO 
the plant itself accepts it as a benevolent sign just like innate with its template do you think that the life force of plants might also have something like that can you imagine growing perfect crops five six times the yield with no pesticides at all very little fertilizer growing on its own because because it knows now as a life force that you need it to grow what a concept is it possible that human consciousness can be even extended into plants and animals it's just the beginning I give you right now a glimpse into a beautiful future and those who listen to this and those in front of me now as human beings are all saying the same things oh it can't come too soon let's have it now oh, cry and win win and I want to tell you I want you to be quiet because you're gonna be there all right you may look a little different but you're gonna be there dear ones you are an old soul and you are not done with this planet you're gonna be there do you hear me I want you to get ready for it I want you to celebrate it know it's gonna happen I want you to see the truth in this channeling I want your innate right now to check me out your Merkabas are powerful and there are so many of them in the room check me out and feel what is there and know that this is true and it's yours because of what you've done and what you're doing it's your legacy and your future and it's about time greetings dear ones I'm Cryon of magnetic service there are those who have heard these kinds of channels many times and we welcome them and then there are the first timers who have not there's always the first timers and we say to them isn't it interesting you have the same voice the same intellect the same human who a moment ago actually stepped away how is this process possible and I will tell you it is that which you have perceived which gets you literally into trouble cognizing this or believing it because you've expected something else we've said many times that over the years the eons channeling is the way spirit talks to you let me take you back hundreds of years even where you sit today and there is a group who is meeting you might call them the indigenous, the originals, the first Americans. And if you look at what they do, of how they treat that which is Mother Nature, God, Spirit, whatever you say, the first thing they do is they honor their ancestors. And in honoring their ancestors, you may not understand they are honoring themselves because they see themselves as a product of their ancestors they may even have the concept of past lives and they are their own ancestors and an elder the one who was assigned as the one who is the oldest and the wisest after a certain amount of time or a certain amount of singing or dancing would actually have a statement or a message or perhaps a prophecy and it all is channeled that is how it works and that is always how it is worked the acknowledgement that the elder was the one who had the ability to lead the others is not that uncommon if you go back further and on another continent 
thousands of years before that they were simply doing it the same except the gender was switched now I take you to Australia and it was all women and the idea of this is they are the life givers they are the ones with the intuition they are the ones who raise humanity and children what better to have the shamanship and the channeling that humanity with them needed and so what you see in the chair is only strange because your society says it is now I'm speaking long enough so far for you to get used to this and I'm going to ask you are you starting to feel that the energy is different this is not the man who stood before you the subject today is what it always is the magnificence of the human being in this new energy is startling what is starting to happen in society will take generations but what we want to tell you is what we have said before there is precedent here this has happened before in other places and so when you hear the channeling of expectations of the prophecy perhaps of where it's going and what's going to happen and what is going on at this moment it is a reflection of what has happened before and in that there should be some solace what happens with change what happens when things start to get better there's often upheaval is often a, a retranscription of reality <laughs> where you have to get adjusted to something that literally was not there before if new things are presented to the psyche of the human being the first reaction is fear <laughs> a new reality is not comfortable until it is absorbed until it is tried until it's comfortable and what is going on not necessarily just in this room but within old souls and humanity in general is the upheaval of change the thing that you are starting to see the most is what I will call the exposure of the white hats and black hats no more fence sitting is what we have told you is upon this planet and the darkness is starting to show clearly whereas before it was muddled in the soup of grayness you might say of your very existence you might have lived for 20 30 40 years on this planet and been part of major conspiracies of Illuminati's of control and never really truly understood it because it was in the grayness under the hood and now it's not and suddenly you start to see it and you react and what that's going to do ladies and gentlemen is it's going to create choice that you never had before and that choice overwhelmingly we've seen it is going to be for the light integrity and transparency and it starts with upheaval it starts with things that don't make sense it starts with a with a dark army that cuts people's heads off and wants to create horror and sorrow and darkness everywhere a country not a, a country based army but one that has no borders at all first time a dark army without borders without a common language we've said that over and over and over so that you'll see it as unique to your time and right on schedule the knee jerk reaction to the dark over light is that they must survive at any cost and they're going to climb out of the woodwork you're going to see it everywhere it's going to come in many disguises outrageousness change 
And it's already among. Those here know it. And it's in everyday life. You're going to see light workers that are having to make decisions. You can no longer, we talked about this last time, you can no longer subscribe to these kinds of energies and then go out of the room and live differently. That is a paradigm that you have gotten used to, dear ones. And the paradigm says that you go to worship and you dress for it and you sing songs and you kneel. And then you go home and you get in your regular clothes and you're somebody else. And you do that for year after year and you call it acceptable. Never understanding. It's not even real. And now it gets real. What do you believe? Do you carry it into your life? When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you think? There are those who will put their feet on the ground and say, here it is, another wretched day. And it will be. Created from their mouths, their consciousness, and they will walk from place to place and everything will go wrong. And they'll cry throughout the day because everything is wrong. Never understanding that their consciousness precedes them. And then there are those who will put their feet on the ground and smile and chuckle and say, here I am again, magnificent in a beautiful world. And you'll say, well, crying, are you? Are you just fooling yourself? It's not a beautiful world. Maybe it is to the one who walks around and creates a beautiful bubble wherever they go. A countenance which is gentle, which allows them to laugh, which has compassion for others wherever they go. That's the beauty of their world, and they're creating it wherever they are. These are the new masters of the planet, and you're going to see more and more of this dark and light have you been with friends who are no longer friends? Because all they did was drama. Did you have perhaps a, a whole decade long of a friendship when all you tried to do was help somebody? But every single time you met with them, the story was the same. The tape was played over and over. And finally you realized it was never going to change because that was the reality that they've chosen to create. And so you dismiss and you are on your own creating your own bubble. The difference is this, dear ones, that your bubble is light and is being shared. Wherever you walk, the darkness recedes. This is the new energy. And light is winning over dark, which means that if you have a compassionate consciousness, it's infectious. People are going to want to be around you, to see what you have that others don't. That carries you through life differently. It makes it so that you and your children have a better life and you react differently to them and they see you differently. You at work is different. You with others is different. And we say again, is it just same old, same old? Or are you starting to wake up to something that not only is different, it's joyful, magnificent, infectious, desirable? I'll say it again. You will live longer if you laugh. You will live longer. The chemistry will change who you are. The joy factor is the subject. And in this changing energy of today, this is what you are trying to achieve. Tonight my message is going to be one that is slightly different. We're going to talk about that which is without and within. A new paradigm, literally, of how you meditate, of how you worship, of how you look at spirit or God starting to evolve and grow up into who you are and always were. Getting out of the old paradigms of linearity that you saw when you were born. Even in this, which you call the new age. We sit in a time that is different 
And in this area, what you have is beautiful. Meditators. It's why I am here. It is why my partner is in Fairfield. Because the energy that is created with consciousness is palpable. Because it is a sweet and gentle place when there are those with compassion looking to spirit for guidance. And there are so many of them that the land resounds with it. The crystalline grid remembers it. And even those who simply drive through the city will feel it. You're in the right place at the right time to hear this message. Beauty is coming to this planet in so many different ways. The little pockets will start to grow. Wisdom will start to be seen finally as desirable. The rock throwing that you currently see in your politics eventually will diminish. There will even be wisdom there, unbelievable as it seems. This is where it's going. There will be those who will hear this and read this someday. A long time from now. And will recognize that it really is prophecy. And fulfillment of that prophecy, the potential of it, is in your lap, old soul. Because you're not going to sit and watch it and wait for it. You're going to create it. That's your job. Compassionate action is what we're asking for every day as you walk the planet. And that's enough for now. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. The voice you hear indeed represents the energy of the creative source. That is God to some, spirit to others, whatever you want to call it. We have discussed what the creative source is and what it is not. A benevolent source that knows you. Unbelievable to some that the human being individually would be known by the one or many, the soup, the creation that was responsible for setting the universe in motion. And the reason for this personal touch, you might say, is because in you is part of the Creator. We've told you this before. The system is complete because you are part of God. It's important, especially in this new energy, that you really cognize this and feel this. We go back again to the ancients to see what they would say. For instance, what is the first organized spiritual system on the planet thousands of years ago? What was their first intuition? about who humanity was and the answer is God inside there are still cultures many of them millions of individuals on the planet who would greet you with a namaste the 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 acknowledgement of my God inside me greets the God in you God inside is not a foreign concept Do you realize the connection that is possible here? Dear ones, with the DNA working at the degree it is, the shallowness of all of it, as you progress and as you have an elegance of the divine evolvement which is at hand, the first thing that's going to happen is that connection is going to get better. And the God inside becomes the God outside and inside. But for now, I want you to really, really cognize 
that you've come into this planet with the creator inside you this is reasonable and logical for the test of the planet for the souls that have to come here and work the issue there has got to be creation in each of you if that's the case I'm going to ask the big question of the evening when you sit to meditate when you sit to pray when you worship why do you lift your hands and pray to somebody other than the God inside humanity is going to have to start understanding in this new energy the way to the future is not an externalness it's an internalness look at what has happened and what it's become the God inside from the ancients has become the God outside you didn't just remove God from your bodies in this society you made it so humans were useless and worthless and born dirty and had to to grovel and crawl even to to be noticed by this creator it's a disservice it's a dysfunction to the entire body when God is inside the evolution of the human spirit will have a great catalyst and that will be the belief of starting to activate the internal compass your consciousness to this point has always had a lack of self-worth God inside is a beautiful concept and it didn't stick and now we start asking you to create something that is going to be understood by you but not practiced by you a concept that says you leave divine because you were born magnificent and you were the first breath you took the soul that entered your body all of the planning that gets you here creates a magnificence a beauty that is seen by spirit and God as beautiful and yet you don't and now it is time to start reevaluating what's in there the internal compass is more than just intuition it is God inside of every single human being asking to be activated you still are guilty are you not of a bias or even when you meditate you're looking at an external source dear spirit I want this help me with this dear spirit I love you what if you internalized it and called it what it is in an older energy we taught you that the best question you could ever ask of God is tell me what I need to know and now we're saying the question is the same but now you're gonna start asking God inside internalization of this issue means that when you sit to meditate you honor your body first because that is where God is in every single piece of DNA hundreds of trillions of pieces God's in all of them there is a piece of you which is quantum a very small part of the DNA molecule has been proven to have a quantum attribute that is just part of what we speak of there's more than you think in there if God is inside you ought to be able to sit down and meditate 
and start pulling forward that which you need as your internal compass because you are calling on the source which has always been there. Not the source that sits in the sky, the source that's inside. And to make it easier for you, you might reframe the way you speak or think. And you might start with, dear spirit inside. <laughs> Tell me what it is I need to know. Activate my internal compass. So that I will be able to sense the direction and not worry. Dear spirit inside, quench the fear that I have about anything. Dear spirit inside, show me the peace that passes all understanding because I'm worried. Dear spirit inside, I'm afraid. Activate that which I know is inside me so that every single cell can feel what I know is there. I am eternal. Give me the peace, the quietness, and do it now. Has it ever occurred to you that your consciousness can speak to the Creator inside your body? Look at this pathway that you've all but ignored as you search other places we've said it before in the scenario of today somehow you have got to the place where you've eliminated Gaia you have made God dysfunctional it's a God who loves you so much you're gonna burn in hell if you say the wrong thing that's not God would you do it to your kids that's not God Inside you is the whole engine. It's all there. And it's time for you now to take it, kick start it, and see it. Is it possible that every single cell of your body knows what I'm talking about? We've spoken about the field. We've given you two major channels on the benevolence of the field. Some have called it entrainment. There is a field of physics that wants harmony. That puts things together in a synchronous fashion. We've even called it physics with an attitude. Because it's not, it's, it's not fair. It's not neutral. It's benevolent. And in this new energy, you're going to see this manifest itself every single time you ask it to. This is the wind at your back, finally. This is the help you ask for, finally. And it comes not from the sky, but absolute normal physics. It can be measured. There's a reality in your court that wants to help you activate the internal compass. You wake up at 3, 3.30. I know who's here. And some of you wonder, what will I worry about now? <laughs> because that's the pattern, isn't it? Years and years and years. You assemble the worries and the fears, you make a laundry list, and then you present them to God. How linear of you. What if you woke up at three and said, thank you, spirit, internally for waking me up? Dear God inside, show me why I'm awake. Oh, I see. So you could hold my hand and tell me you love me. So I could go back to sleep and be more peaceful than I ever was. Thank you, God inside. There is no thing, no thing too great. For the God inside. No matter what you're feeling. No matter what anxiousness you have. No matter what is there. That you think. Maybe even permanent. No matter what you're going through. There is a bridge to the God inside. That will wipe it away. And the peaceful river of love will flow through you. Like it never has before. People will see it in you. 
People experiencing some of the things, things you have to experience will see it in you because you've mastered it. You discovered where God is. And the irony of it, you've just returned to the past. The ancients knew it all along. And now you're just reawakening some of the most profound knowledge of humanity. It hasn't even been hidden. It's just that you had to get to the place where you wanted to see it, to awaken it. Part of the spiritual awakening in this new energy is awareness of things that are there that you didn't see before. Of you accepting concepts that you never considered before. Of having the thought that perhaps they belong to you instead of to a guru or, or the channeler. That indeed all of the equipment for everything we're talking about is already in place. And it's been sleeping a long time. Sleeping. The whole idea of awakening something that's been asleep is no more just a metaphor. It is reality. But that's the way it feels. You walk out of the room with a new awareness, but perhaps a new paradigm. Stop looking outside yourself for answers. Because they've always been in you. Meditate the same as you always have meditate. But what you're now doing is balancing internally that which will manifest externally in your actions, in your consciousness, in how you treat others, and how you greet the God inside of anyone who comes in your path. We have spoken over and over about compassionate action. We've talked about a change of consciousness that makes your actions different. We said this leads to healthy things. It leads to longer life. This is the evolvement of the new human being. But this is a major hurdle. Listen to the way you meditate and pray. Add the word inside every time you mention spirit, every time you mention God. Dear God inside, dear spirit inside. And your body is going to get used to this. It's going to own it. It's going to start understanding you have cognized the divine creator inside yourselves. It's step one to so many things that you have. That you didn't think you could do. Now I know who's in the room. I know who's listening. What have you got right now? That is so sorrowful. Or that creates worry and fear. What is it about humanity that lets you project the worst into something worse? <laughs> and so whatever it is that you fear then you create a bigger monster. This is the old energy paradigm that will completely and totally be wiped away by dear God inside. Darkness cannot exist when love rules. Hatred cannot be there when joy rules. Sorrow cannot exist when laughter is the king. And this is the teaching of the day, of the year, of the century. You turn the corner, dear God inside. And you join the ancients who knew it from the beginning, for it was intuitive. And then when you have time, and when you want to, I want you to walk outside to where the trees are and the dirt, not the cement. 
where your feet can touch the dirt and you can say something that Gaia has wanted to hear for centuries. I want you to say, my God inside says, welcome home. You're going to start collecting energy from the source of Gaia itself because that is your partner here. You cannot survive without it. We're in a place where there's many farmers. You ask them, they know. Farmers have a tendency to go barefoot when no others would. <laughs> and you'd say, why would you do that? And they would say, because I want the dirt between my toes. Because I can feel that which is the energy of the dirt of the divine. And it soothes my soul. It's the step after God inside. No matter where you live, you can do this. You can go where it exists and do this. And I'll tell you, you're going to receive a revelation of energy. When you start including Gaia yet again. But dear ones, first is God inside. The externalization of where and how God works converted to the internalization of the reality of how God works is the key. Did you know that when you start that, your biology starts to shift? Did you know that your chemistry will start to shift? Did you know that the benevolence of the field will have a greater impact upon your health because suddenly you are allied with things that you never were before. If God is external, how are you ever going to internalize your health? If God is external, how are you ever going to have the peace inside? If God is external, what's it all about? Why do you exist? The logic of this should be clear because there is no external. You are God. And collectively, your consciousness will change the planet because you are God. There's more. We'll continue at another time. Dear ones, as you sit listening, all of you, I want you to know that this message is so, so filled with, with, a word that my partner can't conceive of because it doesn't exist. There's no word of how much the creator is part of you. There's a confluence of love that flows from the other side of the veil directly to you when you cognize and understand and internalize the creator. As long as we're outside of you, it just sits there. When you bring it in, when you bring it in, you're going to live longer. When you bring it in, it starts to be complete. I'm crying. I would not tell you these things if they were not so. The new human is beginning to arrive. And so it is. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I want to extend the message of last night. It may appear different, but it is the same subject. But even before I start giving any kind of information, I want to identify the channel. It's really not an informational channel. 
There are times when great things are proposed that you haven't known. They're great because they reflect what the human can do. We talk about systems that maybe you didn't know and things that are happening to you that maybe you didn't know. And other times we just want to sit at your feet and talk to you. And that's all of you. There's great awareness of who listens. There is this multidimensional, timeless thing we talk about over and over that says we know the listener. When you, when you have to suspend the linearity of time and know that spirit knows the potential of who's going to listen. And then since these things are recorded, you have the specter of being in two places at the same time. You see, I'm talking to the listener no matter when they're listening. And to them, it's now. And yet to you, it's now. And let me ask you, whose now is correct? And the answer is all of you. There are these kinds of things that we look at especially in energy. There's been lots of questions and answers this day of my partner, of me, for I am with my partner. He started to tell a story and never did of what happened to him five years ago. It actually wasn't five. My partner is more like eight. <laughs> When he stopped compartmentalizing Cryon. Humanity does this. They look at their relationship with spirit. And they segment it. There's a place to worship. A time to worship. What you wear when you worship. A day to worship. You come and you go. You schedule it. And we've said that before. My partner was doing the same thing. Some of you are doing the same thing. When he sat in the chair, he changed because he had to bring in me. The group that is called the cryon, that is an energy from the other side of the veil that can communicate with you basically through love. And he had to get ready for it. He actually had to leave the room and come back for it. Many people remember these times. I asked him, is he ready for the next step? He didn't know there was one. He thought he had arrived at the last step. <laughs> there is no last step. You're always, always going to another one. And he asked what it was, and I said, how would you like to be with that which is your higher self and me? All the time. I can remember his answer. Partly comedic, but there was truth. He said, will it hurt? <laughs> Partly reality, will it hurt? And what he meant by that, will it hurt the flow of my life? Can I still be me? As though a magnificent thing would be bad. And then we ask him to try it. It became a meld where no matter where he is or what question he is asked, he delivers the answer from that part of him which is connected to me. In these sessions, some of you can feel it. When he flips between Lee and Cryon, those who discern can see the light in him change. And this is the invitation, an extension of the last channel we gave you. If God is inside, why do you compartmentalize it? How many of you can meditate while you shop? <laughs> Some of you feel that in itself is a form of meditation. But the question is this, can you multitask with God? 
Can you be at work or an assignment or something that you're doing because this is what you do? And at the same time, you're involving the grandness of creation. Do you separate them to the extent that one does not belong to the other and then when you're done, then you can have a nice meditation? Have you mastered the art of being awake and meditating and being connected to spirit even when you drive so that it's not dangerous? Did you know that was possible? Some of you know more than it's possible you do it. You don't have to leave your body. You don't have to be someplace that, it, that is what they would call non-concentration. That you can multitask. Even accountants be crunching their numbers and at the same time be aware of their divinity. Because it can be 24-7 all the time. Humans have not been built for this. And the reason is because that which you call human nature, your society, your training, your culture, has always segmented everything. A time to eat, time to play, time to work. Time to worship. A time for happiness and sadness. And as this meld begins, all of those things also meld. If you start this process and you understand what I'm saying, the compassionate part of you starts to be involved no matter where you are, no matter what you do. It's almost like an extended worship service where you would pray, meditate, sing, feel the presence of God in everything you do. And you would not be worshiping an entity or even a God. You'd be worshiping the joy that you have. You would be grateful that now you could have something all the time and not just once in a while or not just on the schedule. Crying, is it possible we can be, be connected when we sleep? What you don't know is you've always been connected when you sleep. That's part of that multidimensionality of your dreams where they go everywhere. And you can't make any kind of linear sense in so many of them. Your brain disengages. And part of spirit then will be with you in ways it is not when you're awake. Awakeness often creates survival. Awareness of who is there and why they are there and how you can move around and be safe. Can you do that and still be connected to spirit? And the answer is yes, completely, totally. I want you to revisit your own Akash. There were times, dear ones, eons ago, when you really were in survival. You really did carry a spear. You really did have something, perhaps, to live in you wouldn't recognize today. And I want to tell you what the indigenous believe. That God is in everything. In the animal that is about to be sacrificed, in the plants that grow for your nourishment. And every step you take, Gaia is with you. The meld was complete, and that has been lost. And now we rekindle that meld, but in this new energy, it goes far beyond this. It starts to enhance the intuition and synchronicity. Who will you meet and when? I speak to a room full of people. It is there now. And I say to this room filled with people, did you meet somebody you didn't know today? 
And did you learn anything you didn't know from them? Did you recognize them? Not as former family members, not as profound Akashic things, but as member of a soul group called the Creative Source. Could you see you in them? Could you relate? Could you be empathetic to the point where you could join them often and know that you'd be safe and fine? Synchronicity works this way. You're pulled together from places that are very different. For commonality, you have come to the room to hear the channeling, to enjoy the energy, to be with others of like mind. And now let's add the last one to always expect. Synchronicity with people you don't know. There are those who had answers for you today if you took the time to meet them. The situations and issues that you've asked about and wondered about. Synchronicity is the new key. Intuition will push and pull you, not karma, to come to these kinds of meetings and other areas where you will meet those who are there to meet you. And how are you going to enhance that? How do you know where to go? And the answer is the meld. The last channeling asks you to stop looking for an exterior God. And start looking inward to an interior God. So that your meditations would begin differently. Dear spirit inside. Dear God inside. And when you say those things out loud, the very cells of your body celebrate the fact that you know it. It's almost like they're saying, they're awake. They know about us. Finally, the integration begins. The meld is the invitation. To carry around that part of you which is divine, that you feel is God, whatever that is. To carry it into the most unlikely places. What you do, where you go. As you drive, as you walk, as you shop, as you eat, as you talk. And dear ones, when you do that, things change. You're healthier, did you know that? You can't segment and remove spirit from your cellular structure and only visit it when you want to and expect balance in your cells. Your cells crave this. The balance of bodies crave this. The missing piece, the element that's always been something that has been mysterious and people have asked about over and over how can I this how can I that your name goes here how can I go this what's next you're not melded yet or you wouldn't ask the melded human being is one who is super intuitive and don't even know it they just know what they should do where they should go and what's next that's the meld that we speak of this creates the new human who is starting to appreciate and understand that spirituality is not removed from the corporate, corporeal human being. The corporeal human being. Can you do this in a corporate structure? Can you go to work? Can you go to committee meetings? Can you meet the boss and have God inside? Now, some people say, no. <laughs> I've got to leave spirit at the door when I go into the office. As though spirit was not there. I hear this all the time from humanity. And they would say, you have no idea what I have to go through. As though we weren't there next to you 
the whole time. Even in your statements in meditation, you don't know we're there. You've isolated and compartmentalized yourself so much that you have to try to explain to spirit in your meditations what you need, as though we were never there. <laughs> the one who melds, don't get this wrong, the one who melds may find themselves meditating less because they have changed the nomenclature of meditation. 24-7 meditation. Always connected, no matter what you're doing. Always meditating, because you have God inside. Always thinking like a meditator, because you have God inside. No more isolation. No more, no more scheduling a meeting with God in a place where you know God is. Instead, you know where God is inside you. 24-hour meditation with your eyes open going to work. Is this really possible? Now those who are meditation specialists are a little nervous with this message. Because the old paradigm says there must be a dedicated concentration in order to achieve a certain state of esotericness. And I would like to tell you something. They're right in an older energy. They're right in an older energy. And the proof of this is what meditation creates in your body. It creates healthiness. It creates longer living. It creates that which is less anxious. It actually spreads into the ground around you. They're right. And now we're saying it's changing. A meld creates a different kind of meditation, but the results are the same. You won't be meditating as much in the way you used to. Instead, you will be meditating every second of your existence. Everywhere you concentrate and look, you will see God there. You will think about spiritualness not in the same way. You won't be concentrating on some elusive thing and trying to bring it to you because it's already there. And instead, you will readjust how you look at everything. How you look at a tree or a chair or wood. How it's connected in some way to you. You will look at your own soul differently. You will start to understand your eternal. That even after that part, which others call your passing, you're still here because you will be biological and you'll continue the journey you have before you will again you start to see your own life differently the fears that were drummed into you will start to leave you'll understand that you can have empathy for the planet but it doesn't have to control your emotions you can see injustice and it doesn't have to make you sob and cry and not sleep. Instead you can see that and you can send energy to that part of it that needs energy because of the God inside. You're meditating. You don't have to become part of the problem to work with the problem. You have to be in that mode that says all things that are happening are here and happening and what I am is the catalyst to compassion around them. I can put them in a bubble of love and the result will be that others will feel it. And that eventually those things will morph and change. And then when you have enough doing it together, what a difference. 
It's all changing. Who am I really speaking to here? The old soul. The one who would want to meditate at all. Who recognizes the power of it. The appropriateness of it. The majesty of it. And the message is clear. God inside. The meld is here. Change the very definition of meditation. Because now it is really getting powerful. Because you are the source. Instead of visiting it, concentrating on it, and using it, you become it. That's power. It's all part of this message that we gave last night. Getting rid of the exterior and bringing it inside. The message is about energy. Who are you really? Lastly, who are you really? Old soul, the very thing that would bring you to the room. Meditator, listen, the very thing that would bring you to meditate is God inside. Who are you? An old soul on the planet will say, well, I've been here a very, very long time. I've lived a lot of lives. Let's go beyond that. Who are you? Let's talk to the one who's listening right now, who's a first timer, who is not an old soul. Who are you? Let me take you on a trip. At a level that is beyond the soul. When you join other souls and you're not here, you become part of an amalgamated energy, a soul group that has no singularity or identity that is linear. You are part of the soup of creation, the energy of the universe, looking at the galaxy. That's who you are. That means you were here when the earth was created. What if I told you that every single one of you, in whatever form you can imagine, was standing there at the very creative event when the universe was put together, the galaxy started its journey. Where time meant nothing. And the clock didn't tick. And the idea of ancient was not even in the language of God. It just was. And you saw the collision of objects. You saw the earth created. You saw the moon created. And the whole time you knew the Pleiadians were coming. That group of ascended beings from far away. Who also had God inside just like you do. Almost like your spiritual parents, not space people, but spiritual people, people, not aliens, people who would eventually come here and seed you in a way that would be magnificent to bring you to this place where the shift is happening, where my partner could sit here, where channeling is being listened to. You were there when the earth was created. You were there when the galaxy started spinning. You got to see the, the, the pair in the middle of the spinning galaxy. Not the singularity, not a black hole, but the push-pull of the energy that no one has discovered yet and will. You know how physics works. You knew that someday you'd start your journey here. That's who you are. That goes apart from humans, doesn't it? Now we're talking about the essence of you. You're forever. And when you meld, I promise that one of the things that's going to happen is that the longer you live, the more you'll be aware that death itself is a paper tiger. <laughs> it's a transition, and all it does is create sorrow 
for those you left behind. That's all it does. It doesn't take you to a bad place. It takes you to a good place. You go home. And all that happens next is that you come back. The worst thing about death is not dying. It's those who are left behind and how they treat it. And how you can prepare them to treat it. If you can cognize this with them too, they'll have a celebration. They'll celebrate you in your next incarnation. They'll celebrate all that you did while you were here. They will celebrate you into the beyond. And there will be tears of joy that you're eternal like they are. What a concept. A new kind of funeral. And it's coming. You're going to see it. This is an accelerated consciousness. Ways of thinking that are very different. And they're going to become common. Because universal truth is that way. I want to remind you in closing. There was a time on this planet. When there were many gods. And it wasn't that long ago. Even when you're talking about three to four thousand years. Which is nothing. There were multiple gods and arguments about which one is correct and real. Most of them were dysfunctional. And then something happened at the right time, in the right place. The earth got the news and accepted it almost universally over a small amount of time. Monotheism. One god for the planet. Today, there is one God for the planet. That is a consciousness shift. And so when we tell you there's going to come a time when you understand more about the way things work spiritually, even death and life, you're going to say, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I want you to readjust your thinking based upon what happened in the past. The earth shifted its whole focus because the truth spoke for itself. There is one God. And there'll be also the agreement that there's also one system of one God. And that one system is that humans have a soul that is eternal. And the eternalness of it is not something that goes to another place. It returns and celebrates its existence and improves the planet every time it comes. A beautiful system of soul return. And that will then be common on the planet. Just like monotheism became common on the planet. It's coming. It will not then cancel or make systems wrong which you call spiritual they will simply adjust and you've seen it before they will adjust and still be as magnificent not everyone will then have to change their spirituality it simply will be a new truth that finds itself in its appropriate way into the systems you call organized religion things will get better because of this you're so singular so many of you listening now still believe that there's come a time when the earth is going to be the earth is going to be a u utopia and all spirituality will be seen as the same and there will be no dissension. <laughs> you will have free choice forever. And the free choice will create a variety of opinion. But today if you ask somebody about monotheism you'll say of course there's one God. The dissension is how to worship the one God. <laughs> that will then go away. And the realization that the oneness is for everyone. And there is no right or wrong. There's just love. 
that will morph into something else, which will morph into something else, if you connect and meld. Dear ones, in closing I will say this, you are at the cusp of new paradigm shift that is spiritual. And that part of what old souls know will work is this meld that I'm talking about. Creating something that is with you all the time, 24-7. Awake in the morning and celebrate your existence as you put your feet on the floor. When you go to sleep at night before you swing your feet onto the bed, celebrate the fact that God is inside and you're never alone and that death will never have a sting that you've been taught it would. I want you to think of your demise, which will always happen. Think of your demise, which will always happen. And smile. Can you do it? Because you're coming right back. And you continue, and you continue, and you continue. It's simply a transition. That's all it is. Call it a transition of love. Because that's what it feels like. You'll see, you've done it before. How many of you have a Kashic remembrance of passing over the veil? And you might say, well, I don't really remember that, Kryon. Oh, you will. And when you do, a whole nother awareness will be yours. This is the beauty of what's happening here, slowly. There'll come a time when these channels will be listened to yet again in whatever format is available at that time. And you'll say, all of this has happened. The fun part is that you'll be there. So will I. And so it is. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon, a magnetic service. This is the fifth message. Dear ones, we talk about what old souls go through. We've talked about the shift. It is why we are here. So that we can try to reveal things. Things that you're going through. Things that you may go through. Things that others around you are going through. That is the transition of the ages. We speak of the transition from an old energy to a new one. And there are so many metaphors around this. The energy is truly the energy of the entire human race. The potentials are being laid from going from an old paradigm of humanism to a new one. If you have gone from an old energy and eons and eons, it simply didn't change. And suddenly, Within a few years, it starts to create new paradigms of existence. You can imagine the train wreck. That's what we want to talk about. Old souls, each of you are different. And you will react differently to this transition. And it's so difficult to create a message which is perhaps generic to all. It can't be. Many, many years ago, more than 10, Cryon Book 5 was written. And it was the journey of a man with seven angels called The Journey Home. 
We told you that this book was a novel, a story. There have been no other stories like this. And in the story we told you that absolutely everything that the hero experienced named Michael Thomas, everything was a metaphor for something else. And that the invitation was open for you to read the book with intuition. And what I didn't tell you is that the entire book is a story about one man and his shift. And what he had to go through from being a beautiful old soul who was very pleased and happy with who he was to an enlightened soul who understood fully who he was. And all the things that took place in the book one by one was a precursor of information and knowledge and wisdom about the shift. One of the things that was the most difficult for Michael Thomas to go through was where he had to release his baggage. And in the story it is told that an angel that Michael Thomas was with and loved and appreciated looked at Michael Thomas and said I couldn't help but notice that you're carrying some baggage and the angel said that the baggage would unbalance him because he had re he had actually reframed himself and and had reworked himself to the place where he had accepted some gifts and tools that were new that he was wearing and carrying but if he had his baggage he wouldn't be able to use the new tools and so the angel said release it now let me take it and hold it for you I'll walk beside you just let me carry it for for you and Michael Thomas backed up and said don't touch my stuff and he walked out the door and the angel knew what was next and didn't say a word dear ones you have to know this that the beauty of free choice means that you're not going to be admonished pulled back and said don't do that don't do that that's not going to happen because once your choice of free choice is made you can go anywhere you want and Michael walked into a storm and the storm actually forced him into a decision he could keep his stuff and be destroyed by the storm the winds were enormous or he could release his baggage and survive it's a metaphor for understanding and awakening to new truths he wasn't going to be killed he simply would not be able to move ahead into a new paradigm unless he released the baggage as the story goes Michael Thomas indeed released his baggage and in the story the baggage that he had was the personal things that he he held dear to himself and the truths that he had and all wrapped up into metaphoric things that he carried around with him and he released it and if that weren't bad enough the storm tore it apart it was being released he saw it go to shreds and he stood there seemingly without anything seemingly without anything for a little while according to the story Michael was mad at God he accused the angel later of a scenario a system that said well I see how things work here in this magic land if I don't do what you say you're just gonna do it to me anyway he was mad and the retort of the angel with that accusation was as follows 
Michael, you ask who gives permission to take away your stuff? You did when you decided to go on this journey and call yourself an awakened old soul. What is the definition of bad stuff? Or difficulty going through this? And that is what we're going to talk about now. Michael Thomas released his baggage all at once. Some of you don't. Some of you are, are very attached to certain things. And you will find that you will release some things and not others. You're still out of balance, dear ones. In the room right now, there are those who have released a lot, but not all. There are those who have released all, and there are those who release none. It doesn't change the fact that you are an old soul sitting here or listening to this with full knowledge of the shift. And now I want to I want to bring this home. I want to start itemizing some things. Briefly, small list, but so important. Some things you've heard from me before in different ways, but now I'm putting it together. The old soul releasing and changing. What is required really, truly to move ahead? And in the process, I will tell you, this list is challenging. And in the challenges that I, that I list to you, there is always, always solution. Always. But it's challenging. It's why some of you have said, I release it. Kind of. But I'm going to hang on to this one. My partner tells his story of what he then released and at the, all the time he withheld one thing. And then he had a storm that forced him to release the last thing. Dear ones, you don't need a storm. If you're paying attention, you don't need a storm. The storm is something that spirit creates with you with free choice that you walk into and synchronicity brings it so that you will have a greater experience when you reach the other side of the storm. When you go through the darkness and you come out healed. Things that perhaps you're not even thinking of that needs to be released. So let's do what I'll call three and three. There'll be three attributes that I'm going to give you that some of you have heard before that are primary of things that the old soul needs to understand. That release is something that will actually guide you forward. After Michael released his bags, he changed. And the change was because suddenly he was open to certain other things that he never would be open to while he held his bags. And so the, third, the second three sum will be change. Things to look forward to. Things to change into. And here they go. Dear old soul, I would love you to release everything that anybody has taught you to this point. Why? Crying, you're crazy. There's been some profound teaching from my parents, from my school, from, from everything. Everything. Now let us analyze this. Everything that was given to you and taught to you was a derivative of the way things worked in an old paradigm which is changing. I want you to be able to drop everything that you were ever taught. We've told you before the difficulty here. You might want to, but it's almost a betrayal of those who taught it to you. 
And whether it's a, it's a loving parent or whether it's a friend or a teacher or school, you have to be willing to drop everything that was ever taught. And the reasoning, yet again, it was fine for the time. It, was, it had integrity when it was taught. And now you're about to engage a new planet. You have to be willing. Difficult, challenging, and very doable. Tough. Can it get harder? Yes, number two. Everything that by yourself you have learned in the old energy works for you, is you, and about you, and defines you. Drop it. You will not survive well in the new energy when you have defined yourself from an old. And don't carry the residuals of it. Drop it. Come in fresh without any of the baggage of the knowledge what you think is right, wrong, true, false. Because that is going to be upended as you move forward into a paradigm of light. Dear ones, literally, the teaching, the learning, everything you have experienced so far has been in a dark room. You couldn't even see each other. You had to feel what was going on. And you came to certain conclusions based upon feeling what was going on. You couldn't even see one another. And now you walk into the light where you're learning coherence. You're learning to link with your hearts. You're learning things that didn't exist then. New tools you can't carry. What you learned in the dark into the light. It won't work. The tools themselves will get in the way. That's tough. But old soul, I can tell that so many of you are listening and analyzing. When it's done, there will be a willingness to step into a new life, a new way. It does not have to have a storm. How willing are you? to let go if you're gonna hold on there probably will be some more challenges for you that is the beauty of spirit loving you enough to giving you options and pushing you a little making it difficult perhaps for you then to let go that is the love of God dear ones that's how much you're loved Instead of simply casting you away, saying, well, that person's not going to do anything. Let's move on to the next old soul. Spirit doesn't do that. The love of God is far greater and grander. You will be pushed all your life and reminded about the stuff you're hanging on to. Because Spirit knows who you'll be if you release your stuff. And you come into the light, you live longer. You don't worry about things. You don't take on other people's problems. You have compassionate action. It's different. Number three. Now you might not think that this is very strong. This sounds timid compared to the other two. I want you to stop deciding what others think about you. Because things are changing. In this new energy, there's going to be a greater acceptance of esoteric truths. And it's subtle. But when you start telling people about what you are into and what you believe, I want you to watch. Instead of turning the other way, rolling their eyes or laughing, they will come a little closer to you. And they'll say, tell me a little more. You know, I've had a feeling about that. It's already starting to happen. You're careful who you talk to about what the subject is. Now I want you to drop the reactions from the old energy of who you are and think differently. When you present light to people 
and integrity to people about what you believe and what you're into I want you to see their reaction because so many of them lean a little closer now they don't back up and go away lean a little closer and they say you know I've heard that before tell me a little more what have I asked you to do I've asked you to drop history of how you've been treated that's tough it's tough and you know why because you've been treated like that for eons it's in your akash it's a knee-jerk reaction what people are gonna think suddenly you come into the light what we call the field and it affects humanity and it may not affect them so they're all awakening to new truths but I'll tell you they're far more accepting when they hear things that resound to the truth than ever before so let's call those the three primary things to drop there's more but if you can drop those dear ones everything else becomes easy and the more you drop the easier it is how about you considering dropping all three at the same time that's going to save a lot of frustrations when Michael Thomas dropped his baggage everything realigned and the teaching really began on these seven angels he had to go through this before he could start to abs absorb what they had some of you in the new age the metaphysics the esoterics have come through the last years with certain tools that worked and whether you're a reader or whether you're a healer you are aware that some of these tools are now suffering they're not working as well and so what we have said in the past we'll say again even before we go to the next three you must drop the knowledge of what the old tools were supposed to do how do you drop knowledge it's in there forever I want you to drop the perception that you need them and the reason is this because new tools are on the way and the new tools won't look like the old tools forget the old tools sometimes the new tools will do the same thing they may even kind of perceptually look a little like it but they're going to be double in efficiency in the light remember the difference metaphorically is now you can see the other person you can align with them you can heart connect you can have a confluence of energy that you couldn't in the dark therefore the new tools are going to be completely different because you're in the light you can see don't be alarmed that the old tools don't work anymore and what we have said countless times before depending upon your path in life depends upon how quickly you get them the synchronicity of who you will meet to help you with them how efficient they will be and the old soul who has used the old tools and is used to it is going to be impatient tapping their toe the whole time bring on the new bring on I'm a very patient person but bring on the new bring on the new be patient take a little vacation because you're going to need to there's work coming and these new tools whatever you want to call them the ability to see to read to write to go to do to heal to be to balance to love these are the tools coming and they have nothing to do with the old ones at all nothing you're going to be busy the sparks will arrive one by one the last three have to do with acceptance of change that's tough for a human being 
much less an old soul who has an Akashic that is rich with the ages. There are certain kinds of things that humans react, object, all of the things that humans do based upon past experience. Number one, acceptance of change, acceptance of the new tools, acceptance of new ways. Can you do that? It's one thing to drop your baggage, but you're going to go looking for what you dropped. And that's the change we want you to know about. There's an angel walking beside you with all the bags you dropped if you want it. You can pick them up again. You have free choice. I shouldn't have told you that. And that means that they're really not gone. These things that you say you've dropped, they really are not gone. They're part of you. They always will be. Dropping them really truly is a metaphor that says in your psyche and what you cognize is completely and totally cleared. And you're ready for the new. Being ready for new things is a nice statement until the new things come along. And you're saying, no, not for me. <laughs> That's the human being. And the older you are, the worse it is. And the reason truly is that you perceive change as difficult and something that you're not necessarily suited for because you're stayed in your ways. What if some of the change involved that which was not comfortable for you that is what you have to conquer you can learn anything dear old soul honestly you have been through so much change you have been there when everything has been invented that you currently use and now it's time to look at it again here it comes what is it you object to what is it you won't do? What is just a little too new for you? What is it that you assign to the young people, which is going to be the future of humanity? And you say, well, not for me. It's only for the kids. Not understanding that it's going to be the future of humanity. Tools are coming that will connect you to other people in ways you never dreamed of, that will actually allow long distance healing confluences of energies put together hearts connecting coherence how would you like a situation where you could have worldwide coherence with a device where everybody at the same time is looking at you and you're looking at them you think that's a little too spacey for you it's coming what if the world starts to expect it because the science shows it works? And then even young people turn to it and say, they say, time out, time for a coherent, a coherent session. And then they all look at something, which I'm not going to tell you what it is. You think that's funny? It's coming. I want you to look at this differently. Accept new things. Number two, I have talked about this at least four other times. It is one of the most difficult things to change in your psyche. To change in your psyche. Do not let the past dictate the future. And you do. And you do it because it's simply the way things work. You have become accustomed to the way everything works. Some of you are so cynical about the way it works, you expect it to fail. You expect dysfunction in certain things. And here come those things again. And you look at them and your whole brain goes, dysfunction again. And the new energy and the light don't let what has happened in the past paste itself into a new future with light. Here you are saying, well, it's happening again. You're wrong. That's going to stop you. 
What's going to happen are things that only have the residual of the past until that clears. There's going to be things that you didn't expect, things that will clear and work differently, and you won't even believe it. It's not supposed to be that way. You've learned, for instance, that politics is only one way for hundreds of years. Suddenly in the light, well, not so much. It's going to start changing. There might even be integrity. There might even be reason and compassion. There might even be common sense on how to pick leaders differently than you ever have before. And yet there will be those that say, impossible, and eh, eventually it'll corrupt just like it did before. Do you see what I'm saying? You cannot carry the disappointments from the past or even human nature itself. You can't carry it into the future because everything is starting to change. Watch how you think about these things. When certain things pop up in the news or whatever and, and they, they seem like way out of kilter from the way things used to be, there's a tendency for humans to say, well, that won't last. <laughs> and then it does. And you have to think about it. Can you be fresh with it? Can you make an affirmation that would say, I expect only benevolent change, wisdom, to start to develop in the things that didn't used to have them? I expect change to be benevolent. I don't expect it to be as it was. And I'm going to do my best to project the positive things into everything I see into the future that was number five and this is the last one number six a change that may not seem like it's that difficult but oh boy is it it is the subject of the day I want you to learn to relax with life Can you do that? Because, dear ones, I'll say it again. Two steps forward, one step back. And when the step back happens, the monster called fear will want to cover up everything you've ever done. That's good. It'll want you to forget the light and go backwards into dark. This is going to take a while. There are going to be disappointments. They're going to be challenges. Don't let them derail you on this beautiful train that you're on. Understand, understand. Two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. It's not going to be a linear climb of a ladder of enlightenment for humanity. It's going to take its toll on some. Some won't be able to stay on the train. That's already happened. Some will, will see it and say, too difficult for me, and not join you. And all the while, I'm asking you to relax. What you have learned today, and the day before, and the day before is on purpose. How to align hearts. The processes of alignment between human beings as a group, individuals in twos and fours is going to be critical. And you're going to be having to practice this in order to stay balanced and so you don't take on others' problems and call them your own and let them burden you and take you down. That balance is necessary for what you're going to see the earth go through Two steps forward, one step back. Can you do that? Now that you have been alerted of how it works and the expectations, did you notice that the teaching is becoming more specific from Cryon? And that all these years up to 2012 was a preparation so that you would know who Cryon was. 
and the integrity and the beauty and the love that I see for humanity. And now the teaching begins. To get you through the shift, old soul, so that you'll understand what is happening, why it's happening. And put your hand on your heart and be peaceful and know you exist for a reason. You are the light of this planet. Don't let anybody put it out with doubts or fears of what you are, what you're doing. That's enough for today. And so it is.